Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about market valuation and the narrative that investors attach to prices. The daily headlines for much of the past month have been about the latest stock market bloodbath. We hear terms like bullish and bearish. Some people I know have earned the nickname permabear to somehow denote that they're biased towards pessimism. The first part of this year has resulted in a tremendous amount of paper destruction of wealth in both the stock market and in cryptocurrency. I simply don't buy into the notion of bullish or bearish as a label that I would attach to myself anyway. I mean, think about it this way. Imagine if you had a one ounce gold coin. If you wanted to trade that gold coin for two half ounce coins, that would be a fair trade. If you traded that one ounce gold coin for five quarter ounce gold coins, Well, now you'd be turning a profit of a quarter ounce of gold. In that trading scenario, the frame of reference is ounces of gold, and you either trade for a profitable amount of gold, a neutral amount of gold, or a losing amount of gold. It's simple math. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 5 minus 4 equals 1. These are all within the grasp of any second grade student who understands addition and subtraction. The headlines in today's Wall Street Journal are talking about how Bitcoin fell in price to as low as 25,402 on Thursday, down 10% from its 5 p.m. Eastern Time Wednesday. It's the lowest level since December of 2020, before rebounding to about 29,300. The analysts are trying to attach a narrative to these market activities, accusing some of being market bears. Digital assets are increasingly, at least according to the Wall Street Journal, moving in lockstep with equities as traditional money managers, such as head funds and even family offices, have entered the space during the last couple of years. But why is Bitcoin intrinsically worth 29300 or 25400 or even 65000 or even a dollar? There's no answer to that question. Why are baseball cards worth anything above the fraction of a cent of the intrinsic value of the cardboard and ink that were used to manufacture the card? Why is the 1952 rookie card from Mickey Mantle worth $5.2 million? Why is it worth anything more than its initial face value when it was printed? The volatility in many cryptocurrency markets has given rise to very stabilized digital tokens that are not supposed to be volatile in the presence of intense buy and sell activity. While the most popular of these coins, called stable coins, maintain their levels with assets that include dollar-denominated debt and cash, there's a coin called TerraUSD that uses an algorithmic stable coin. It relies on financial engineering to maintain its link to the dollar. In the past, that coin kept its $1 price by relying on traders who acted as its backstop. When it fell below the benchmark price, traders would burn the stable coin, removing it from circulation, exchanging those coins for a dollar's worth of a new token called Luna. And that action reduced the supply of TerraUSD and raised its price. Conversely, when TerraUSD's value rose above a dollar, traders would in turn burn Lunas and create TerraUS dollars, increasing the supply and lowering its price back down to a dollar. That system ceased to stabilize the cryptocurrency after a series of large withdrawals of TerraUSD from an outfit called Anchor Protocol. At the same time, TerraUSD was sold for other stable coins through various liquidity pools that would also contribute to stabilizing that benchmark. The sudden rush of selling spooked some traders, and it just, the whole system fell apart. But the fact that none of these algorithms are infallible should be no surprise to anyone. This is all notional value. Why is Netflix worth 70% less than it was in November? Why are Coca-Cola shares worth more than double what they were a decade ago when in that time revenues have seen a 17% decline and earnings per share are down by 40%? It's as if in this new world, 1 plus 1 equals 14 and 70 minus 2 equals 6. There's just no connection between the previous price and the current price as a frame of reference. And that's because in this world, there is no frame of reference. Why is a pound of coffee $2 in the commodity market? Well, you can add up the labor and the energy that went into making that pound of coffee and determine that $2 a pound is a fair price for a product of that quality in reasonable quantities. There's an intrinsic value to that commodity. But why is Bitcoin more expensive than a pound of coffee? Nobody can answer it. Even the scarcity argument doesn't hold up because the scarcity is an artificial scarcity determined by a line of software that theoretically can be changed to add or remove coins from circulation. This is no different than entrusting the amount of dollars in circulation to the Federal Reserve. 
In today's market, I'm seeing many cases where a single-family home is selling for a substantial premium over what it costs to construct a replacement of that home. That valuation doesn't make sense to me. I want to see valuations grounded in tangible hard math that is grounded in rationale. That rationale should not be based exclusively on what the last trade price was. And too many markets are relying on the last trade price as the benchmark. And for that reason, we see words like bubbles being thrown around. Does that make me a bull or a bear? I think neither narrative applies. I'm pushing for a simpler time when value could be tied back to something tangible rather than some arbitrary story. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.